1424 once again with NASCAR 08. In this episode of our season with David Rudeman's Double Zero Domino's Toyota Camry, we are going to be completing race 8 of 36, which is going to take place at Phoenix International Raceway for the Subway Fresh Fit 500. In the last episode, we raced at Texas Motor Speedway and got ourselves a top 5 finish. Now, that, that was all nice, but the problem was I dumped two drivers and almost three drivers in that race. I dumped John Wood which was very satisfying, especially that hot-ass replay. And then I dumped Jeff Gordon because he started going really slow into turn three. I tried to get out from behind him so I wouldn't wreck him, and I went underneath him and then just wound up dumping him because there was no room. So this game is doing the best it can to make me look bad. And I should mention that I almost dumped Bobby Labonte at one point, and that was all my fault because this car doesn't turn, and I should be used to that by now. Now, Phoenix is going to be our first night race of the season. Been looking forward to this one because we're going to be using the Domino's paint scheme. The track is more blue at night, I suppose. And whenever we get to the day race at the end of the season, we'll be using the Burger King paint scheme. But um, I prefer the day race, but I'm pretty sure the night race will go just as well. Uh, man, I like this version of Phoenix because this one has the grass. And the newer version, they, they paved over it. And now everybody's diving into the dog leg and uh, abusing the crap out of that dog. That, that poor dog. Let's just get to the racetrack. Tony Stewart is going to be starting on the pole again. For some reason, Tony Stewart always starts on the pole. This game is a little obsessed right now with uh, making sure that I can't win this championship, and they're not succeeding whatsoever. Kyle Busch is going to be starting in second, Jeff Green third. Clint Boyer is going to be starting in fourth. For some reason, Clint Boyer's uh, number image is it doesn't have its background taken out, for those who haven't noticed. But David Gillen is going to be in fifth. Dale Jarrett, my teammate, in sixth. So hopefully he runs well in this race. Brian Vickers in 7th, Robbie Gordon 8th, Paul Menard 9th, and in 10th place is going to be Matt Kenseth. Where is Michael Waltrip going to be? Uh, 17th. Let me guess. He's he's going to be on the inside, so that's good, but I don't know. I don't think he's really going to move that far forward. Maybe he'll surprise us. Let's just look at the rest of this. I usually don't do that. John was going to be starting horribly. That's great. Dale R. Jr. is starting bad because this game is atheist against Dale R. Jr. And more and more starting... Results. I really should just show all of them before we do these races, honestly. Maybe that's not necessary. I don't know. I didn't see Jeff Gordon in there. But this is going to be another race in which we use the car of tomorrow. And uh, I guess I really don't mind it. For the most part, I would like to use the regular cars because I like driving those more. The whole outside lane just died. I'm getting held up by David Strimi over here in his Tom's car. This is an interesting paint scheme because I'm so used to seeing the light blue Tom's quick pack car in um, Mask Road 9. And look at this and it's, it's that indigo color. Dark, dark blue. Okay, I'm trying not to dive underneath these guys and crash into them and stuff. I've got to be careful. Get out from behind them and oh my god, what the hell is going on? I'm just flying past everybody off the corner. One lap complete and I wind up being in 36. And I just drive right into the 96 car because I'm trying not to overshoot the corner. That was rude. But I'm an asshole, so me being rude is justified. Right? I don't know. Dive underneath this 22 car, and yet again, I just drive right into people, trying not to oversteer the corner. I don't want to drive underneath the yellow line. For some reason, my controller is not vibrating. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. I want it to vibrate, but it's not vibrating. There we go. I drove in the back of him, and I got a little vibration. This controller is going out on me. I need to buy a couple of new DualShock 2 controllers. The only reason for that is probably because I keep throwing them around whenever I rage. Oh my god, whenever I throw a controller, I throw it far. There's the Eleanor Jr. up on the outside. Everybody's going really slow in the middle of turns 3 and 4 for no reason. We are already three laps into this race, and it seems we've made up up to 29th place. I can't exactly calculate how many positions that is because I'm too busy focusing on this race. Whoa, don't. Hit Sterling Marlin. What can I say? This is uh this is the easiest part of it all. Once we get up front, we're trying to pass the leaders. Things aren't gonna be so easy. Plus, Tower is probably gonna kill me. I'm turning, but nothing's happening. I just shoved JJ Yilly into Harvick. I mean, I'm off the gas and I'm turning all the way to the left, but the car is still driving somewhat straight. All I gotta do is stay on the bottom to get passes and make up positions. Huh? If we're going on the outside. I probably just never really get anywhere. There's Mike Waltrip up there. He seems to be sustaining his position for the most part. Um, it's single file out there, so I can't exactly say he's on the outside. But if someone gets underneath him, then I guess I really can say he's on the outside. My car is getting really loose on the rear end. I don't know if that's tire wear or my horrible driving. 
Maybe it's a combination of both. Hi, Casey Kane. Casey Kane's not having the best races. Golly, the AI in this game are just not that consistent. It seems Jeff Gordon, I was looking for him in the qualifying results a while ago. He's up there in the top 15. Uh, Reagan, David Reagan, I'm right here. He had all the room up on the outside of the track. Okay, Michael Waltrip. I know we could probably work with Michael Waltrip in the next race, which is Talladega, and that's like the most perfect track to work with somebody in this game, but um, I think I could help him get a few positions right here, although I really don't want to waste too much time trying to. Where are you going? Go go to the inside. Dumbass. Uh, why do I even bother? I've learned from NASCAR 9 that if you want to try helping somebody, but they keep getting out of the way and going to the outside, then you should just not bother, because... They really don't want to make progress. They just want to drive around in circles for a few minutes and then be done. It's so dumb. I remember spending so much time trying to help Matt Kinzen and Carl Edwards in that damn game. And Well, a large portion of the time I didn't get anywhere. Pretty soon we're going to be in the top ten. Speaking of the top ten, Jeff Gordon just made the top ten. And Dale Jarrett over here has fallen out of it from the looks of it. Um, can't get underneath Ryan Newman just yet. Kind of going to go to the outside so that I can help out Dale Jarrett. Clear Ryan Newman, I suppose. Which is not going to help me whatsoever. But I'll get a run behind Ryan Newman and we'll clear Bobby Labonte again. Okay, Dale Jarrett. Uh, well, hey, 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 what the hell are you doing? Why did you, why did you get stuck to me? And they just took off. I'm trying to help out Dale Jarrett. And then I go into the corner and Ryan Newman just pushes up against me. And then he won't get off. Because I got physics, I got completely physics into the corner. He touched my car and then he decided not to get off of it. <sighs> EA Sports, they um, they specialize in making bad video games, not video games, just bad video games. Now they add the microtransactions to it as a bonus. Well, I actually get back to attempting to make positions, but I mean, towers kind of keep me from doing that now, from what I've seen. I'm gonna dive underneath Dale Jarrett right here. Okay, let's not dump Mark Martin. That things are bad enough as they are anyhow. I'd like to get in the top ten before pit stops begin. But pretty soon pit stops are going to begin now that I think of it, because we're on lap eleven. Okay, underneath Mark Martin. He knew I was there, but he didn't really do anything about it. He just drove right down into me. And now I'm kind of helping him get past Clint Boyer. Because maybe if I help him pass Clint Boyer, then I can also help myself pass Clint Boyer. Okay, I'm trying not to drive into the back of him. I hit the brakes and it makes me lose. We do get this position on Clint Boyer. My car is just sliding through the corner. I think we have a chance to pass Jeff Gordon going to turn one right here. Might not be the best idea. Ah, god damn, this freaking Tyler. And it says I actually have Tyler now, but I feel like I had Tyler damn near six laps ago. Didn't take that long for Tyler to get here, did it? I forgot to turn my brightness down on my laptop so that I wouldn't get a, a glare of my glasses, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. Uh, I just saw Robbie Gordon and Kyle Busch make a little contact up ahead. That's something that happens quite a bit in this game, it's just other drivers making contact. And I kind of like that about this game. I know it's probably a flaw in how they designed the AI, but yeah, that actually happens in reality. And I just totally screwed up my entry a turn one a while ago. The tires keep me from doing anything correctly at the moment. I know I just freaking screwed Mark Martin, but I can't take the blame with this freaking tower not being tolerable. Uh, driving the back of Jeff Gordon because I'm just trying to take my corner all casually. I'm going to go down pit road now because this car is getting a little unbearable. Don't speed into pit road. Okay, really good pit road entry. We're going to... Yeah, we're not going to repair damage because it's not going to affect our time even if we do. But we're going to get four tires, full tank of fuel, and that should be it. I really have kept this car in good condition. You know, the hood's not propped up. Um, got a few bumps and scratches, but it's all good. I guess the hood's a little popped up, but um, it doesn't really look like that from a distance. And uh, Tony Stewart stayed out, so he's probably going to wind up leading the most laps in this race. We've had the fastest lap with a 26.59, which is about one-tenth faster than second place Kyle Busch. So maybe Kyle Busch will come out in the lead due to his fast laps. Maybe if pick, we can help capitalize on that. Jeff Gordon has the lead now. I think he's also down pit road. That might be the last people starting to take pit stops. Okay, getting back on the track. Looks like we're clear. I'm going to go to the outside of Dave Gillen here so I don't drive into him. And the AI are probably going to rubber band because that's one thing they do. Pit stops start happening. Everybody just shoots forward. Freaking 100 and 
80 miles an hour at a damn speedway like this one. People call this a short track, but to me it's not a short track whatsoever. It To me it drives like a freaking speedway. It's just a, a slow speedway. It ain't no short track to me. Robbie Gordon, you need to go or get out of the way. Is this, this, is, uh, this is annoying. There you go. And he hit the brakes for the dog leg. Did that seriously just happen? Uh... Oh, I can't pass. <laughs> I can't pass. So, Tony Stewart's no longer in the lead. Paul Menard is in the lead. Uh oh. Okay. Whatever you say, game. Paul Menard. I hit the wall. You know, I can't do that NASCAR Heat Evolution or NASCAR Heat 2. I really can't do that. You touch that wall, it just freaking car just slams to the right side of the track. I will kill you immediately. Kind of reminds me of the uh, wall off of turn 2 in the older games. Because back then... The, uh, the outside wall of a turn two kind of stuck out. Like in NASCAR Thunder 2002 and, well, NASCAR Thunder 2003 as well. I remember the first time I played NASCAR Thunder 2003, I went to Phoenix International Raceway, and the back of my car hit that wall of turn two, and it just spun me around completely and caused a huge wreck. And that was on a live stream, too, so if you find that, feel free to take a look at it. Oh my god, who is this? That is Ryan Vickers. He drove over the curb and just bounced his car. I think we can win this race, to be honest. I'd honestly like to know where Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett are. Maybe Dale Jarrett's still in the top ten. Or maybe his pit crew didn't do him any justice. Uh, Michael Waltrip, on the other hand, he's probably in the 20 somewhere because his pit crew wouldn't do him justice either, would it? Got underneath Tony Stewart. We're passing him for second. I'm pretty sure we can win this race. Because Paul Menard is right there. I'm going to look through the uh, race ticker to see if I can find my teammates. Mark Martin in 9th, Jeff Gordon 10th. Jeff Gordon is having a better race than he usually does, to be honest. Michael Waltrip is in 12th place. Okay, that's much better than I expected. Dale Jarrett is in 14th, and I'm looking at the freaking ticker, and it messed up my turn 1 entry. Tony Stewart got underneath me. I gotta focus at some point, Spawn, actually win this damn race. Some point, I said place. What is place? What, what is place? I, I'm not exactly poised right now. The back of my car is so loose going to the corners because of tire wear that I keep on messing it up. That is not going to help. A little contact with Stewart because I'm trying to clear him on the outside and it's just not working. Okay, I'm going to get on the brakes early so that I can actually hold my line in turn one this time. Come here, Paul Menard. I'm going to get you. We're going to get our... Is this going to be our fourth win of the season? I think it is. We won Bristol. That was our third. So yeah, this will be our fourth win of the season. We can win this race. I think we're going to do it. We can do it. I'm going to do it. Get over here. You and your damn yellow haberdashery. Pretty sure people hear me call him haberdashery, but um, they have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. I only know what haberdashery is because of freaking Neville from iCarly. Not even kidding. But yeah, that that's what Paul Menard's car is sponsored by. Um, a haberdashery owned by his own dad. He's sponsored by his own family. Uh, he's right there in front of me. Yeah, fuel's getting low. Tire wear's really starting to come in. They did I'm trying to gain time without losing time because of the back of the car kicking out like that. I'm really not getting anywhere. Oh, we're brewing up another exciting finish, aren't we? What the hell do you just swerve to the outside for? Okay, come on, come on. Oh, oh. Damn, he got back on the gas and he really pulled away a bit off the corner. Well, here we come again. Here we come again. I'm going to go to the outside and try to make him block me going to the corner. And dive underneath him right here. Don't make any contact, though. Hey, what the, what are you doing? I'm not even turning. Golly, these freaking tires. Here we go again. Can't pass somebody because tower just keeps dragging me down. Maybe this time, maybe this time. Uh, uh, I'm turning, but nothing's happening. And that, that was kind of a crossover, even though we had a little contact there. And a slingshot off of turn four. I can't get around him. White flag, one to go. Uh, he brake checked me. No, 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 don't do this. Yes, yes, we got him. We got the spot. Never mind, he's slingshotting back around me on the outside. Oh, come on, game. Holy crap, we got a bunch of cars behind us. I think I got this. I got this. Got this. Just gotta take the corner fine. I got it. We are going to win here at Phoenix International Raceway for the Subway Fresh Fit 500. I almost called it the Checker Auto Parts 500, but that's a completely different race. Now we can do some donuts. And Jeff Green actually got that spot from Paul Menard. It was kind of an aggressive pass with the lead, because I, but honestly, 
I felt like it wasn't going to be possible to get that position without making contact because my car kept sliding around every time I got underneath them. We're doing some donuts! Some C-nuts! Some Subway Fresh Donuts! I, I should just stick with Phoenuts because it's Phoenix Donuts is Phoenuts. Domino's Pizza Donuts because, yeah, Domino's, they sell donuts now, ladies and gentlemen. $1.99 each. Some really freaking expensive donuts, but of course it's fast food, so it's always expensive as fuck. DONUTS! Got the Phoenix International Raceway medallion for first place, so that's the first time I've wanted this track in this game since I've gotten it. For the fourth time this season, we started in dead last and finished in first place. We only led one lap, and that was the last lap. That's kind of the same thing that happened at Daytona, wasn't it? Jeff Green started in third and finished in second. And he and a bunch of other guys were just climbing their way up to me and Paul Menard towards the end of this race. I noticed in my mirror with like one or two to go. That was ridiculous. Paul Menard started in ninth and finished in third. He led nine laps in this race, which is pretty much all the laps after pit stops until I came along. Tony Stewart started on pole and finished in fourth. He led 14 laps, which were all the laps for four pit stops. Brian Vickers started in seventh and finished in fifth. Robbie Gordon started eighth and finished in sixth. David Gillen started fifth and finished in seventh. Uh, I'm guessing this is Kyle Busch right here, started in 2nd and finished in 8th. Mark Martin started 16th and finished in 9th. And Jeff Gordon actually started in 15th and finished in 10th in this race. So yeah, this is probably the best race that Jeff Gordon has run this season. Maybe there's another one that I haven't um, remembered. I haven't really been keeping that much track of Jeff Gordon. I just know that he's not doing very well on the points right now. And uh, you can look at the rest of the race results. Our teammates, Waltrip and Dale Jarrett, got 12th and 14th respectively. So uh, I can say that's a decent race for both of them. Hopefully they can keep it up and uh, actually get along in the point standings because Dale Jarrett, he's way behind and Mike Walker, he's trying to get himself into the top five or whatever. And you can look at the rest of the results. Scott Rick started in 36th and finished in 43rd. We didn't have any DNFs in this race. After our win at Phoenix, we are 142 points in front of Tony Stewart in second place. Kyle Busch is in third, 199 points back. Robbie Gordon's in 4th, 365 points back. Jeff Green is in 5th after getting that 2nd place finish just a while ago. 378 points back. Bobby Labonte is in 6th, 386 back. Our teammate Michael Waltrip is in 7th, 395 back. Jimmy Johnson is in 8th, 441 points back. J.J. Yilly is in 9th, 450 points back. And Ken Schrader is in 10th, 456 back. Dale Jarrett is actually moving along in the point standings quite a bit. He's now in 29th. Um... Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in front of him in 26. So let's see if we can get Dale Jarrett to pass um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. after Talladega. Because Talladega is one of those races where, you know, bump drafting your teammates and other drivers around can actually really help them um, get you through the race. It can help you as well because it makes you go faster, obviously. Jeff Gordon, I didn't see him above. Golly. Jeff Gordon is in 36th place right now despite getting that 10th place finish. He is way behind. Oh, my God. This game. What What is this freaking game? Denny Hamlin, A.J. Hamlendinger, them guys back there. I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon for the Aaron's 499 at Talladega Super Speedway, which is going to be race 9 of 36. You should really look forward to that one as much as I am because you start from the tail of the field and you got to work your way all the way to the front. Make the best of it. I mean, it's going to be as good as the uh, Robert Gates tribute I did in this game with the 38 car and the 88 car um, late last year after he had passed away. It was kind of also an announcement that I'd be doing an LP of this game this year. But um, it's going to be like that video, except we're going to have commentary, and uh, the commentary is probably going to make it harder to compete in that video, which will make it even more entertaining to watch. It's always more entertaining whenever you've got me next to it. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.